This is Formula Rossa, the world's fastest roller coaster. And in 2025, it's due to lose its world record status to Falcon's Flight, the new world's tallest, longest, and fastest roller coaster. So, whilst Formula Rossa still holds the record for at least a few more months, I thought I'd have a go at building it out of Kinex. With no time to waste, the first thing I built was the launch, and surprisingly, this part was very easy. Just a long straight piece of track with a wind-up ratchet system for the launch. And since some of you have requested I explain in more detail certain parts of my build, the launch is one area that I feel like I should. This 3D printed catch car attaches to the bottom of the train, with a cable on one side and a bungee cord on the other. Then, at both ends, I have these 3D printed wheels mounted on steel rods. They use two bearings to help them spin freely. When you wind back the String, it pulls back the catch car and stretches out the bungee cord. A ratchet system keeps the drum from unwinding while under tension, and then I can release it whenever I want by lifting the ratchet system by hand. And with that relatively simple explanation, the launch is now complete. In my quest for making my builds more realistic, I have changed the way I build over the years. For example, I tend to build backwards most of the time nowadays. This ensures that I have enough speed throughout my layouts, as sometimes when I used to build forwards, I'd run out of speed halfway through a build, and end up having to go back and make previous elements much larger. This means on Formula Rossa, I ended up building the brake run and the final two or three hills first. And again, since a lot of you want to know more behind the technical side of how these things work, I thought I'd give you a detailed explanation on my brand new trains. Over the past few years, I've been designing 3D printed trains to give my builds that extra touch of detail. These trains also have a huge benefit of retaining speed much better than the original Kinex trains, and this is because we can use ceramic bearings or hybrid ceramic bearings rather than the original plastic wheels. I'm going to give you a super quick feature list of my brand new 3D printed trains, as I've already created a full detailed video about them before. The wheel assemblies are created with SLS printed nylon powder to make an almost injection molded quality part. Brass threads are located on the tops of all the trains to allow for swappable designs. The front pair of wheel assemblies rotates with bearings on a swivel to allow the train to take tighter turns, and a custom universal joint with bearings also allows for tighter turns between each car. These universal joints also have a screw that's located at the back of each car and attaches to the universal joint. This means that your cars won't just pop off all of a sudden in the middle of a build. Four super strong magnets are placed under each car, and this is to work with the aluminium bar located on the track that will come with 3D printed mount. This is so every car can work with magnetic brakes, and a resin printed chain catch allows you to use the normal Kinex train for your stations and lift hills. And if you want to pick up your very own 3D printed Kinex train while stocks last, then head down to the description where there's a link to my store page. Now let's continue with Formula Rossa. Now that the brake run and the 3D printed train was done, it was time to start working on the main portion of Formula Ross's layout. I started by building this small turn that led into the smallest of the three main hills. After the hill was complete and the speed was checked to make sure it had enough speed, we could start work on the smallest of the three main long drawn out banked turns. Building long drawn out banked turns in Connect normally takes a ton of speed away with the normal Connect trains, but these 3D printed ones were working perfectly. Normally you would create a curve curved structure for high speed turns like this, however, I wanted to make sure the turns were as strong as possible, so I stuck with my normal cube style structure. And it turned out just fine. I even added these extra rods on the side of the track just to give it a bit of extra stiffness. Once that was finished, I dismantled it into small sections and started working on the second largest turn. This turn actually travels under one of the previous hills, so I had to account for that when building it beforehand, making sure it had enough clearance to fit not only the train, but also the GoPro for filming the POV later on in the video. After finishing the track work for the turn and completing the largest of the three crossover hills, we could move on to the largest turn. In order to make sure that all the sections of the coaster fit back together perfectly, I created this floor plan out of Kinex parts. This helped me in knowing where I had to build the next part without having the entire thing in my room because it just would not fit at this point. So after taking the second largest turn out for storage, I moved the hills to gain more space and began working on the biggest turn. This turn was so big in fact that I couldn't fit the entire thing in my room and had to build this final turn in two different sections. So we have a little bit of an issue. That section there lines up exactly with the launch. 
So this is like how wide the base is going to be for the main super wide turn after the launch. And as you can probably tell, there's a bed in the way. So <laughs> I can't actually build that section. So what I'm going to have to do is actually just build like half of it at a time. So I've marked out with this section, this is halfway around the curvature that is going to follow. So here I'm going to build the flat section and then curve it exactly up 90 degrees all the way around and attach it back to the top of the main hill. And then I can obviously remove this turn again and then remove this section here move everything over so that it's snug up against the wall and hopefully that moves that section over so that I can actually have this long stretch here to work on I've already sectioned off everything that was on this side the long drawn out turn and everything like that so now there's enough space to move this over up against the wall and that would allow this section to be moved out just so that I could work on it so it is moved and I've got this bit here which is exactly where the launch goes I've got just enough space build the hill and the final turn that's all I have left and so with the final big turn and main airtime hill complete, it was time to take everything outside to film. I finally designed and 3D printed a real mounting system for my GoPro. So hopefully this won't happen again.